Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to Live of 585 on this Thursday morning. It is good to see you today. We are uh, in 1 Peter chapter 4. Uh, we're looking at verses 7 through 11 today. 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 7 through 11. Uh, yesterday, we saw Peter continue to talk to us about suffering and how uh, Jesus uh, suffered uh, for us in several ways. And one of those reasons, one of those ways was to be an example for us, and that when we go through suffering, uh, we should look to Jesus uh, as that example and respond in similar ways that he did. Um, but starting here in verse number 7 of First Peter chapter 4, Peter says, But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. And above all things, have fervent love for one another. For love will cover a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it as with the ability which God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and the, and the dominion forever and ever Amen. Here, starting in verse number seven, Peter just reminds us that, hey, be, uh, he says in verse seven, but the end of all things is at hand. Wow. Peter encourages us, letting us know we're almost done here. The end of things, the end of life as we know it is at hand. We're, we're getting to the end of this world. I say, well, wait a minute, Hagen, didn't Peter write this like 2,000 years ago? Yeah. So if they were at, uh, if the end was at hand then, the end is really at, end now, at hand now, right? We're closer than ever before to the end. And this is important. Peter, in order to encourage a group of Christians that have experienced a great deal of suffering, he reminds them that um, this world is not forever. That this life is not forever. That this world as we know it is not going to be forever. So he says here, hey, be of good comfort. The end of things is at hand. Therefore, because the end is near, he says, be uh, serious and watchful in your prayers. Ah, because the end is close, be serious and watchful in your prayers. Be praying. And when you're praying, Take a seriousness about it and be watching. What are we watching for? Jesus would tell his disciples to watch, for no one knows the day or the hour when the Son of Man will come in glory. Peter says, man, we're close to the end. Jesus would say to Peter back in the Gospels, keep your eyes peeled. Keep your eyes open. When you're praying, lift up your eyes to heaven because, Jesus would say, I'm coming back. I'm coming back for you. When? Don't know. Not quite sure. Maybe today. If not today, maybe tomorrow. But it's so neat to see that here Peter's encouraging us, hey, the end is close. Take it seriously. Be praying. Be watching. I, I was chatting with someone about this earlier this week. You know, as you read the New Testament and as you look at um, church history in the past 2,000 years, the way that God writes uh, prophecy, particularly in the New Testament in regards to the end, I believe that God wants every generation to believe that they're the last generation. Peter believed Jesus was going to return in his lifetime. Paul believed Jesus was going to return in their lifetime. 2,000 years ago, they thought they were living in the last days. Uh, and, and as you go throughout church history, you see that there's been this expectancy that Jesus could return in this present generation. And, and God does that on purpose. God wants everyone to believe that because when we do, there's an urgency. There's an expectancy. There's an, there's an imminency that's involved there. That Jesus Christ could return at any moment and that's why he wants us to be serious and watchful in our prayers thinking realizing that we could be the last generation because one of us is going to be 
one of these generations is finally going to be the generation that sees all this come to uh, to an end and it might just be ours and if not here's the deal if not you're not going to say well geez i wish i would have lived my life in a way that was less serious for the lord i wish i would have realized that he wasn't going to come back in my lifetime and i would have i would have sinned a little more no that's not going to be the attitude that we have the attitude that we have is hey if, if i don't live to see the end if I'm not here uh, for Jesus to come and get me in the rapture, if I end up dying before then, I'm not going to be bummed in that I wasted my life or I, I had a, fa a false ideology thinking that uh, Jesus could return at any moment. No, that's what God wants us to think. Jesus has set it up this way because it creates an urgency in us. So Peter just reminds us today, man, the end is at hand. Therefore, when you pray, you need to be serious, you need to be watchful, and you need to be praying. Those are some things we need to be doing in these last days. Be serious in your prayer life. Be uh, watchful in your prayer life. And be praying in your prayer life. We started our summer camp this uh, week, and I was over there earlier this week doing some worship and praying with the kids as we kind of started out the day. And some of these kids have never been to church not really raised in Christian homes. So, so as we're talking about worshiping the Lord and praying to the Lord, uh, you just take it to a really elementary level and you say, well, what is prayer? Prayer is just us talking to God. Peter says to us here, the end is at hand. You need to be, su you need to be sure that you're talking with God. Uh, where we're getting to the end days, the last times, be sure you're chatting with God regularly, he would say. Be watchful. And verse number eight says, and above all things, even above watching and being serious in your prayers, here's what's the most important thing for you and I to be doing in these end times, in these last days. He says, and above all things, have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. He says, at the top of your list, here's what you need to have. You need to continue to be fervently loving one another. This is important. Verse number nine, he says, I want you to be hospitable to one another without grumbling. I like that he throws that in there. I want you to love one another with fervent love. I also want you to be hospitable. And by the way, I want you to do it without complaining. It's like, okay, fine, God, I'll be hospitable, but I'm not going to like it, right? I'll be hospitable to them, but I'm going to complain every step of the way. God goes, nope, don't do that. He says, I want you to be hospitable to one another without complaining. Why? God would say, because I want my heart to be your heart. God says, my heart is hospitality towards you and I want your heart to be hospitality towards hospitable towards each other I, I don't want you to have to force yourself to do it and begrudgingly and complain about it every step of the way fine mom and dad I'll, I'll go on this walk with you but I'm gonna hate it every step of the way right no God says I want you to enjoy walking with me I want you to walk with me and I want it to be a joyous thing for you so I want you to be hospitable he says and I don't want you to do it uh, grumbly. I don't want you begrudgingly doing it. Verse 10, And as each one has received a gift, minister to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. As each one of us have received gifts from God, and truly we have, every single one of us are gifted. God has given us all different giftings, um, spiritual gifts, for sure, and you can read about those uh, in uh, Corinthians, how God has gifted us uh, individually with spiritual gifts. He's also given us just some practical gifts. Some people are gifted in singing. I do not have that gift, right? Other people are gifted in, in, in tinkering with stuff and they can fix things. Other people are gifted in uh, very strong academic minds. Other people are gifted in just wanting to, to help out in any way. So Peter says, man, you've all been gifted. You've all been given a, a gift. And he says, the point of that, the reason why God gave you gifts is so that you could uh, use those gifts to bless others. So he says in verse 10, as each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. God gave you this gift. It actually doesn't belong to you. It belongs to him, and he gave it to you, and he wants you to take good control over that. He wants you to be a good steward of that. He wants you to use it in a good way, he would say. So I've blessed you. I've given you this talent, this gift, and God says, I want you to use it to bring me glory and to encourage and edify those around you. If you have a really good gift, but you don't use it, 
God says, I don't like that. One of the things that always blows my mind is people who are really good at singing, but they don't like, they don't want to sing in front of people. My problem is I will sing in front of people, but I'm just not good at all, right? Uh, but there's people that are just absolutely amazing, but you can't for the, the life of them get them to, to come up and join the worship team or to sing in church because of whatever. It's like, no, God has given you this gift. Uh, use it for his glory. God has given you this gift. Use it to, to glorify uh, his kingdom. Use it to encourage his church. Uh, so whatever that might be in our lives, think about that today. What has God gifted me in? And am I using that to bring him glory as well as to help the, the church, the other believers? Now he goes on to say here in verse number 11, if anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it as with the ability which God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belonging the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. I love how he wraps up this section in verse number 11. First, very practical advice. He says, if anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If you're going to say something, you might as well say what God has said. I like that. Don't just be making stuff up. Don't just be spewing your own opinions all the time. Peter says, if you're going to speak, if you're going to open that hole below your nose, if you're going to talk, he says, you might as well be saying what God has said. We don't have time as Christians. We don't have energy as Christians to be saying stuff, to be believing stuff that God hasn't said and God hasn't believed. We don't have time to be saying stuff that's not true. We don't have time to be saying stuff that God's never said. The problem is sometimes we spend much more of our time saying stuff and believing stuff and thinking about stuff that, um, that the devil has said instead of the Lord. We spend more time focusing on the lies of Satan than we do the truth of God. And Peter says, man, if you're going to be speaking, you might as well be speaking the oracles of God. You might as well be saying what God has said. Which, by the way, when you say what God says, uh, that's, that's a good place to be. Because then if people get mad at you, at least you can say, look, I'm just saying what God says. Okay, I, 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 this is even for me. I, I'm just telling you what his word says. Anyway, he says, if you speak, let him speak with the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it as with the ability which God supplies. If you're going to go out and minister to someone, if you're going to help someone, if you're going to make someone a meal, maybe uh, some food, maybe they're down and out. If you're going to go help them fix their car, or paint their fence, or clean their house, or share the whatever it might be, if you're going out to minister to someone, to meet a need of someone, Peter says, let him do it as with the ability which God supplies. You're going out to do God's ministry. God is going to give you the ability to do that. God is going to empower you to do that. Don't try to do it in your own strength. We mentioned this verse last night in our Wednesday night study. Zechariah 4, 6 says, Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. When we go out to do what God has called us to do, he enables us, he empowers us to do it. And don't try to do it in your own strength. Because if you do it in your own strength, you're going to mess it up. If you do it in your own strength, it's not going to go the best. If you do it in your own strength, you're going to get burned out. God says, I'll enable you to do it. As you go forth to do what I've called you to do, as you're simply just being obedient to me, he says, I will give you the power, I will enable you, and I will give you the ability to be able to do what it is I've sent you out to do. So if we're speaking, we're speaking God's words. If we're ministering, we're ministering because of God's power, we could say. And then he says that in all things, this is why. This is why when we speak, we should speak what God says. This is why when we do, we should do with the power of the Lord so that in all things, God may be glorified through Jesus Christ to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Well, why should I speak what God says? Why should I do in the power of the Lord so that Jesus, so that God could be glorified through that? Uh, you see, when I just say what I want to say, when I just do what I want to do in my own strength and my own power, God doesn't get the glory. I get the glory. Peter says, but when you say what God says, when you do what God wants you to do through his power, he says, then God gets the glory. And that's the goal of this life. The goal of the Christian life is for God to get the glory 
And that's why we should do what Peter tells us to do here. So he says, hey, do this so that God could be glorified uh, through Jesus Christ to whom the glory and the dominion belong. Jesus, the glory belongs to Jesus. The dominion, the power belongs, to, it doesn't belong to me and you. It belongs to him. To whom belongs the glory and the dominion for how long? Forever and ever. Amen, Peter says. Forever and ever. Now, forever is a long time. Forever and ever is a really long time, okay? <laughs> forever is a long time. Forever and ever is a really long time. But forever and ever, dominion, power, and glory belongs to Jesus. And Peter says, how about you get started in your life today bringing him glory? How? Say what God says. Do what God would have you do. Do it with his power, not in your own strength. So those simple things in our lives today is going to bring God glory. It's going to happen today, and it's going to be happening for all eternity, forever and ever. God is going to be glorified. So Peter says, how about you do it today in your lives? Good little thing for us to think on this morning, on this Thursday morning. Hope you guys have a great day. Let's pray real quick, and uh, then we'll get on. Heavenly Father, God, thank you for today, Lord. I thank you that... Um, I thank you, Lord, that it's possible for you to be glorified in and through our lives. And Lord, you've made it pretty simple for us to be able to uh, do that. Lord, all we have to do is say what you've said. Lord, all we have to do is let you work through our lives. Lord, you'll give us the power. You'll enable us to do it. You'll even tell us what you want us to do. God, and our job is to just simply do it, is to just simply be obedient. And God, through that, we know that you will be glorified. And Jesus, thank you that you are going to be glorified not only today in our lives, but Lord, forever and ever. Lord, all eternity, you are going to be glorified. You are worthy of praise. You have dominion and power. And Lord, thank you that we get to see that take place in our lives on this day. So God, just be with us. Go before us. Thank you for your love and your grace. Um, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hope you guys have a great uh, Thursday morning. We'll see you uh, tomorrow morning, um, yeah, for a live at 555. I got to go to Idaho Falls tomorrow, but I will be, uh, I'll be here long enough to be able to do this. So we'll see you tomorrow morning. Continue on First Peter chapter 4 um, as we see what else Peter has to share with us.